Hey everybody, what's going on? Just a little video of some of the things that I've used for a finish on the guitar builds that I've been doing as far as the kick guitars go. Now, I'm planning in the future to start building my own bodies, but uh, I'm still working up the tools that I need. I already have a few things. Uh, three different routers. One of them is an attachment for a router uh, for a Dremel. Um, I've got the isolating uh, sander from sander and I'm looking for a few other woodworking tools in order to get this started but for now right now you know these kits are a learning process fixing the flaws making them look nice hopefully now some of the things that I've used for a finish now the first thing that I've used on it for a finish of the guitar was basically the Stumac sells this uh, guitar lacquer and I don't know about the color tone thing, but uh, yeah, stuff works very well. Uh, I've, we've used lacquers on vehicles and stuff like that, not this particular one, but we've done a lot of painting as far as cars go, motorcycles go, uh, you know, anything metal that had four or two wheels, you know, we've worked on it. Now, lacquer works very well now the problem with lacquer is is that it cracks very easily especially if you have too much of it on uh, so you have to be very careful how many coats you apply uh, nice thing about lacquer is that it melts each layer melts into each other so there's you know becomes one so if you end up following the instructions on this, uh, you should really have no problems. Uh, I bought 20 cans of this stuff and basically used it all, almost all of it on uh, one guitar, and that was the red uh, Les Paul style guitar. Now, with lacquer, um, if you start having like a crack or something that happens in the finish, especially when you know wet sanding, sometimes a little water gets behind the uh, uh, the lacquer and swells up a little bit under wood possibly carrying a crack the nice thing about this is that lacquer melts into itself so what I do is take the cap spray a little bit of lacquer inside of the uh, cap and then use a small brush and kind of dab it over the cracked area and it kind of melts itself and the, and the crack is gone um, bad thing about this stuff is is that it uh, takes forever to cure and uh, you know it's very toxic as far as breathing so you want to follow the instructions and, and have a ventilated area wear a mask so you don't breathe this stuff the fumes are very harmful another good thing about this stuff is that uh, uh, you could sand it wet sand it buff it you know works really really well as far as uh, spraying goes you do want to follow the instructions as far as temperature and humidity because it will make this act uh you could have a lot of problems and it could become a nightmare depending on what your temperature of your area is and the humidity of the area it could lay out really nice uh with certain temperatures and humidity and it could be a nightmare if it's too cold now this stuff here i've used this on a the green guitar build another les paul and this was sprayed on the neck the headstock and the back of it the front of the guitar I used, basically it's the same brand name, but it was a uh, brush on type of a polyurethane that uh, it was like the 3X it was called. And basically one coat is like three coats. So it goes on very, very thick. It levels itself out and it ends up uh, a very nice gloss finish. This stuff here on the other hand, it it's a spray. It ends up, uh, you know, sometimes when you spray it too much, it'll come out like a Milky Way. Well, heat will fix that. So if you have a problem where it looks like it's white, uh, get a heat gun or something that uh, uh, just go over the area very lightly, not very heavy with the heat, that cloudiness will go away. Now, this stuff here, I found that, uh, like if you were to spray this on a table, I did do some testing with this first. and. You know, if you spray this stuff on, especially this one here, on a table, especially one that you're going to use, say, for uh, like a coffee table or a kitchen table or something like that, um, any type of a glass that has moisture coming off of it, uh, like the glass is sweating because the water is very cold or it leaves a ring, water ring on the table, you will have the watermark on the table with this stuff so I really wouldn't recommend this product here as far as uh, 
uh, finishing a guitar. It does look nice. Uh, it sprays out pretty decently. It levels itself, and uh, it is sandable and polishable. But mm, I wouldn't use it because of the water problem with it. There are, are other polyurethanes that you can use for a clear. Now the wipe on poly. Yep, yeah, the wipe on poly. Um, I was looking for something that was going to be easy to use, um, fast drying time, and uh, basically just, you know, something that's going to work very well now. We worked on a basically a ground up restoration of a 1928 Ford Model A pickup truck, and there is wood in the bed. There is wood uh, floorboards in it. There also is wood in the uh, uh, spacers around the frame and the body, kind of to keep the frame off the body, or the body off the frame, I mean. Um, and there is leather uh, straps that uh, uh, separate the metal, wood, and then metal, leather, and then metal again. Now the bad thing about leather is it absorbs the water a little bit and it could make the wood kind of uh, uh, rot out. Now all the wood that we used on the Model A was oak, so it was pretty strong, pretty heavy wood, and we stained everything and then put on a different, it was the same thing as a wipe on poly, but it was a different wipe on poly than this one. The one that we used was kind of uh, 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 just a little bit more durable. This stuff here is pretty good, it's not too bad, and I have found uh, some people online who work on guitars and build guitar stuff that have used wipe on poly before with a lot of good things to say about it. Now there are some people that you know don't agree with using wipe on poly as far as uh, a finish goes, but you know what? It works. It works well. It's durable. You can you know in between each coat you sand a little bit and then you end up applying another coat. It has a very good gloss finish to it. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, you can polish it. Now the bad thing about this stuff is, as well as you can see, the top it has a gold tint to it. So. If you would use this on a white or a gray finish, a very light gray finish, you may see a tint change as far as your finish goes. Um, but overall, it works out pretty good. And again, you can keep on adding layers to it and build it up just like if you were spraying it out of the can. And uh, the more layers that you have, the thicker it's going to be. Uh, the more you have to where you can do a sanding, wet sanding and a polishing. You can wet sand this, you can polish it, you can buff it. It works out pretty good and it comes out with a very nice, uh, uh, it, it works out as a very nice finish. Now this one here, which I also have some photos of people who use glaze coating, which I've been calling it um, epoxy resin. An epoxy resin could be used in different terms. It could be a adhesive, it could be a glue, it could be uh, you know, something that you would coat something with, or it could be something that you would end up um, embedding, doing some type of laminating and stuff. Now, this one here is not a glue. It is basically, as what it says, a glaze coating. As you can see on the picture, you know, they use it for kitchen tables or any type of wood finish very durable a lot of bars will use this as their top uh, to coat their tops because of how durable it is and it actually lasts for a very long time it is very tough as far as scratching goes uh, but then again you know not everything is totally scratch proof but you know just like a regular guitar finish you know you want to be careful of keeping away from sharp objects and stuff like that to where it's going to leave a mark or a scratch now as far as like chipping goes good luck chipping this stuff it's it's very hard to chip it um if you bang it it's going to leave a dent but chipping on the other hand is a different story because this is kind of like a a plastic basically you're coating something in plastic uh it seems to be very very durable now this one here uh could be used for two different things you can use it as a wood filler coating you can end up using it for uh say you want to take um, something and embed it into a resin to where it's basically going to be preserved and, and stay like that for the rest of its life. Uh, 
Let's say you have some type of a trinket or whatever that you want to turn into jewelry, well, you can make a mold. And as long as it's not a thin walled plastic mold, because this stuff does heat up. And when it heats up, it's that's the curing process of it. Uh, have a small mold or even an ice tray, for instance. I've seen people use uh, ice trays, pour, mix a little bit of resin up, pour it inside of a, uh, a little bit inside of the bottom of the ice tray, wait for it to start curing a little bit and so it starts turning a little bit harder. Put your whatever inside of the ice tray and then finish uh, filling up the epoxy or resin or whatever you want to call this glaze coating inside the ice tray and wait for that to cure up and now you have something embedded in this sometimes you go to the store and you'll see kind of a novelty type type of a uh, uh, trinket or whatever that there's a bug or, or something that's embedded that's basically what this stuff is and it works the same way um, the nice thing about it too is like I did on the cyborg and the angel guitar kits uh, I was able to submerge the fake electronics into the body and have a window basically using this it's clear crystal clear I mean it, there is no haziness to it there is there's no film it just you can see through it like glass the nice thing about it is is the coats that you use uh, how many times you apply it uh, thickens it up really good sand in between coats um, you could sand this down, wet sand it, and buff it out, and it pretty much seals any type of wood or whatever that you put it on. Again, it's very, very durable. Now, I have seen, uh, again, I got some photos that I've just put up and showing how they use this. Some guitar builders will use this as a grain filler. They'll squeegee it on, as you saw in the photos. And uh, what that does is basically it makes the wood a little bit stronger, number one. Number two, um, fills in all the grains so they could put whatever finishes or continue to use this as a finish on the guitar. So it has been done and it's been out there for a while. People have been using it. Uh, the bad thing about this stuff is, well, when you pour it around edges and sides, gravity takes over and these sides won't be as thick as your top would be. And uh, so you would have to do this over again on the sides. Now the uh, kick guitar, Cyborg, uh, I've got basically, you know, three sides already coated with this. The top and the back are coated with this. So I have one more side to go with it. And uh, basically wet sanding and uh, buffing it out is next. All in all, I think it's a really good product to use. Um, <laughs> It's almost bulletproof, let me put it to you that way. It actually works out pretty good to where it's a very, very durable surface. That's why when you walk into a bar and you see a similar top like this, where it has a lot of depth to the finish. That's the one thing I like about it too, is the rosy kick guitar, and or not rosy, but the angel kick guitar plus the cyborg kick guitar. It's got a lot of depth to the finish, and it just kind of enhances it a little bit more. So all in all, this is, you know, the products that I've been using, as you guys know. And, uh, you know, the rub-on poly isn't bad, as you saw in the photos. And then the glaze coating it really isn't bad. And you all know how lacquer is, because basically every guitar that you buy nowadays has either a lacquer finish or some type of a, uh, I want to say, glaze coating finish on it. The ESP uh, guitar that I built that had it has the... Uh, uh, eagle's head burned into the wood that one there I used lacquer on as far as the uh, body goes for a clear coat but the coating that I had to take off of it kind of was like this glaze coating that was that I'm using on the sideboard um, real thick real heavy and uh, very painy ass to try to strip 80 grit sandpaper on a rotary disc sander uh, air, air, air tools and uh, it scratched the shit out of it, but it didn't cut it. Heat basically took it off. And uh, this stuff here too, it's, it's you won't get any cracking from glaze coating as well, uh, like you would on some finishes that you would use on a guitar. So that's basically it. Uh, hope you guys enjoy and.
Take care.